Okay, we are now at the part of this sew along where we're going to be laying out the edges and everything. Now, my camera can't capture the entire mat all at once. I do not have the right height on my tripod here. So we're gonna just have to work in sections. But I think it'll be quite all right. I think it'll work out. So just grab all of your edges, okay? And what we need to do first is lay the road fabric, which is this black fabric that you see here. We're gonna lay that right side facing up. And we're gonna place the edge pieces, B, C, D, and E, into place on the road. So let's get them all sorted. And you might need to refer to a diagram of the car mat or to um, the large printed piece if you have it. Okay, so I will show you in this diagram of the car mat. Okay, so we've got the edge over here. This is where the house, this is the house housing edge, this piece. That goes on this side over here of the car mat, okay? Then we've got this side, which is edge D, okay? So from there, after D is up here, we will be putting edge C down here, this is edge C. Edge A is over here. Sorry, edge B and A are over here. And then you've also got your car storage here. Let's start getting this set up. So the edge right here is edge D. You can get that lined up. And we want our rights facing, our right sides facing up. But then we also have a corner piece that we need to stick in the corner. The finished sides uh, should cover the raw edges. Okay, so you just wanna make sure that the side that's unfinished is out towards the unfinished side of the edge of the road mat, car mat. Let's grab the lens that's clipped in place. If it's easiest to start with your corners, you can do that. Okay, so I've clipped the edge, the corner piece, and edge D down. And then you can clip your next corner down, which is actually going to be, there we go, their corner piece. And this corner is going to go into where the house edge is. So this is the opposite side. We're going to that edge. So we have two sides clipped. Just move some of these because we need to rotate everything. So we're going now to the opposite end. So we have a corner here. That opposite end, so this is completely opposite. It's the complete opposite side from the houses. Okay, you're tracking that. This side is edge C, and we're going to line up our raw edges, and the finished corners are going to overlap.
And then we need another corner piece. Let's get that lined up. That's going to overlap. Okay, now we need to spin this again. And this final side, edge B first, and then edge A. And then edge A for this last portion. Okay, so we should have clipped all of our edges on. I can't show you an all the way zoomed out view, but it should really start to look like a car mat. The most part you should have edges that curve around you should have the housing side housing edge and then there should be an open corner between edge a and the housing block here where the car uh, deck is gonna go okay once we've done that we're going to be placing each block down onto the fabric and pinning it in place. All right, so we should have a pile of our blocks here. We are going to start with the far edge, so on the diagram. Let me show you that. Okay, so my car mat right now is oriented like this. Okay, so this edge over here, edge that's over that way, is block 12 and block 10. Those are the ones we're going to start with. Okay, so block 10, block 12. Block 12 is gonna go in this corner. Block 10 is gonna go over here. And we are going to need some pins. Let's start with block 12, is our campsite. So we need to, when we're laying this out, we need to leave room for the roadways. So just remember that. And then block 10 is gonna go on the other side. Block 10 is the castle. And we've, we're going to need to just adjust things so that the roads are roughly even. I mean, you can take a ruler to it if you want it to be that precise to make sure your roads are the same width, but you don't have to do that. Um, and then I'm gonna grab my roundabout block. I'm gonna put that in the middle here. Like I said, you can take a ruler and measure your roadways if that's something you wanna do. About two inch roadways probably but once you have things kind of in place just pin them down so that they don't move so it's hard to see because it's coming off the camera but this is my castle block and then stick a pin in the roundabout okay once you've done that let's put the other blocks in place so after the campsite we've got the barn After the barn, we've got the farm. So let's pick 
pin these down. And then opposite from the barn and farm, we have the city block. Let's get that up. So we've got the city. And we've also got the parking lot. And we can pin these in place. So that whole corner is pinned down. Now move or fold up easily, gently. Off of the housing edge, I think it's easiest to go off of the housing edge here. We've got number five, which is the lake. We've also got the volcano. So let me just pop, pop the pocket back in there a little bit. start pinning things down. And I'm going to also pin down the lava volcano block just so it doesn't cause problems. Let's move this over so we should have our little edge of houses where my hand is here. Then we're going to car wash. Car wash should be aligned generally with the lake. And we've got the gas station. Actually, I put this on backwards. Let me fix this, this edge. There we go. It should get um, more narrow as you get closer to this area over here. That should generally be aligned with the edge of the car wash. Okay, and then the mailbox goes in between those two blocks, kind of aligned. Good job. Take a peek at everything and if you are happy with what you have pinned then we should be good to start sewing the blocks and edges to the road. So there's several options to do that. You can machine stitch close to the edge of each piece like an eighth of an inch top stitch. You could do an applique stitch using your sewing machine. You could applique stitch by hand. Um, or you could slip stitch this by hand. Slip stitching 
is the most invisible option, but the machine stitch is gonna go a lot faster, so I would recommend the applique stitch for the machine or, you know, the top stitch. Okay, let's go do that. Let's start out, uh, just because I have white thread in my machine, let's just start out sewing the edges on. So once again, we can do a very tiny edge straight stitch here, top stitch right over top of these edges. We could also do an applique top stitch. An applique top stitch would be a very, very narrow zigzag. Um, I think that's what I'm gonna try. So the very narrow zigzag, that's gonna be like a two, a width of two on your machine. And then you're also gonna change the length, drop it down to maybe like one. It's just a very, very close to the edge stitch. So let's try that out. That looks great. So it's just a little teeny tiny zigzag all the way around. And you can just check from time to time that you like what you're seeing. You can drop the stitch length and stuff down. It does go relatively fast, but it does give a really beautiful, nice finish. When, we, when I come to the other corner, I'll show you. I'm only pausing for a second because I've just noticed one of my corners needs to have the corner popped out. Okay, there we go. Just took a chopstick to it. Now we're back in business. Once you've applied, you can take the clips or pins out. Um, you know, the applique stitch or top stitch, whatever you're doing, should be able to hold the pieces on. That's the goal of it. I'm just going around this corner. And you kind of get the point. I'm gonna keep going until I go all the way around my edges and all around every single block. So it's a lot. It's gonna be a little time consuming, but that's okay, you got this. Okay, just to show you for a second what the applique stitch looks like. You can see, you can see it is a very clear, crisp little zigzag right along the edges of these two fabrics. And when, with the edges, uh, the corners and the edges, when they come together, you want to do the applique stitch across them as well. 